Growing up, everyone in my immediate family were employees. Everyone had a job. And everyone, typically at some point or another, tried some sort of side hustle gig thing of that nature. Now, there was one person in my immediate family who was my granddad, my pop as I like to call him, who, while he was an employee, he also had his own side business, right? My granddad was and still is a painter. And, and he, al- he always painted. So my granddad told me from a very, very young age, he said, D, you always got to keep a little money in your pocket. And I feel like that was his explanation for why he would, my my granddad would wake up at four o'clock in the morning every single day like clockwork with no alarm. To this day, he still gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning with no alarm. Now, my granddad said, D, you always got to keep a little money in your pocket. So I watched my granddad. My granddad was a, a custodian at the public schools in my area, right? He worked at different schools throughout Uh, my childhood growing up. But at one point, my granddad was working at the same elementary school that I was going to. And so my granddad would come to work. He'd work all day. He'd get off. He'd go change into his whites. And then he'd go paint. And so after not after two uh, shortly thereafter I started going with him. Right? And I enjoyed it. I was spending time with my granddad. He always taught me something that it didn't seem like anybody else would teach me or 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 anything like that. Um he always he always showed showed me you know how to go out and how to work and how how to get the money that you that you desired and that you needed. <clears throat> and so we're working one day and I, and I said and I, one day I was tired. I was, I mean I was exhausted. But you know, I told my granddad that I was going to go help him that evening after school paint. And so I went. And like I said, I am exhausted. At this point. So we go. We're working. I asked him. I said Pop. Why do you do this? I said you got a job. You got a good job. Like why are you doing this? He said D. He said while painting brings me in some money. Painting is something that I love. I enjoy doing it. It's relaxing. And, and it, it really just works for me. And I remember thinking, hmm, I want to have that in my life someday. So fast forward, probably about 10 years from that time, uh, I'm in the military. And... I had been cutting hair for a while at this point, but it was always kind of this this side hustle. But that thought of like, you know, doing something that you love and and doing some doing something that you love always kind of stuck in my brain. So I'm like, you know, I I was in a family of employees, so I had jobs from the earliest age I was able to get a job actually. Even before that, because all summer I would work with my granddad, um, 
I worked for like a uh, like a youth group when I was still kind of too young to work um, over the summer over the summertime. And then as soon as I was able to get a job, I got a job, and I held a job all the way through high school. Um, and I went, and, you know, I went to college. I had had a job, everything like that. So, long story short, we fast forward ten years from, you know doing what you love and and finding something that you can do that doesn't feel like work. And I can remember um, it was a couple of my, uh, it was a couple of my fellow Marines, you know, I had a regular schedule of people that came every weekend to get their haircut. And so I'm cutting all of these, uh, I'm cutting these people and I'm thinking to myself, you know, you just got slayed for a week at work. And here you are standing on your feet with no problems and enjoying it. I'm smiling, I'm laughing, you know, I'm having a good time. I don't feel like I'm doing work and, and I make a little money at, at the same time. And I remember I called my granddad, I called, I called Pop, I said, Pop. And Pop don't talk on the phone real long. I said, you remember when you told me that thing about finding something that you can do that you love and that you're relaxed at the same time? I said, I think I found my thing. Because to be honest with you, my granddad telling me that painting was his thing, I wanted it to be my thing. I did. I wanted it to be my thing. And so he was he was all excited for me. He was like, that's good. He said, I'm proud of you. And I said, you know, I think that when I get out, you know, I think I'm going to become a barber. And at the time, this is my first enlistment. I had no plans on reenlisting. Zero plans on reenlisting. I was like, you know, I'm going to be done. And so I got with some of my family and I was like, hey, you know, I'm going to get out and everything like that. And then I hit this wall. And the wall was my family said, how are you going to take care of yourself? How are you going to make money? I said, well, I want to be a barber. And they restated the statement. How are you going to take care of yourself? How are you going to make money? So that seed was implanted in my head, right? How are you going to take care of yourself? How are you going to make money? And I was like, oh, man. Okay. So I decided, you know what? Hey, I haven't figured out how I'm going to make money yet. This is what I really want to do. You know, whatever. I know I can do it while I'm in the military. So... I'll just re-enlist, right? I know I get a guaranteed paycheck from the military and I'll have my little side hustle, right? And I was, and it, it, it didn't sit right with me, but it was what it was. And so, um, like I said, I, I, I re-enlisted. So here we go. Right, side on the dotted line, you still belong to Uncle Sam. Again, the entire next part of my enlistment, hey, all I was doing was, you know, I would work and then I would cut hair on the weekends. I cut hair when, you know, when somebody asked and, and that sort of thing, but I was working and working and working and working and working. Still unhappy, right? I enjoyed the military. It was it was cool. Had some cool people in it. But, you know, the military is a very, very hard job, right? Barbering was my escape from the all of the things that was going on in the military. So it finally came time for me to get out, and I get out, and um, I get out. And I'm flat broke. I get out of the military after spending all of that time in, and I am absolutely flat broke. Right? I take 
all all of my possessions. I load them up in my car. I don't even have enough money to get back home. And so what happens, right? I'm looking, I'm interested, I'm trying to find a job, couldn't really find a job. I, um, in the process, I'm still pursuing, I'm still thinking like, let's become a barber, let's become a barber, let's become a barber. But I got bills to pay. I have a child to provide for at the time. I have all of these things. And that lingering thought of how are you going to make money sticks with me. So what do I go do? I go get a job working in a restaurant. Go get a job working in a restaurant. And um, I meet some people through church and they say, hey, you know, you can go over here to this school. And um, you wouldn't, but you wouldn't get, you wouldn't be able to get a barber's license. You'd be able to be a cosmetologist. And I said, "Well, you know, they can do the same things, pretty much. You know, that's when that's the first time I learned that like cosmetologists can't use straight razors. That's that's one of the big key differences between barbers and cosmetologists. So I said, "Well, I'll learn enough. You know, I'll go over there." And so I go to, I go to, I go to school. I'm there, and um, I'm staying with some people that I met through church, right? Staying with some people I met through church. They were they were great people. They it, it, they took me in. I hadn't known them for maybe like two months, but they, they took me in. They you know. Got me out the cold because it was it was winter time when I got out of the military. Um, so they got me out the cold. They took me in, hooked me up, talked me into going to the um, to the school. So I, I started going to school. But my granddad always told me, "D, you got to keep some money in your pocket." See, that's where that employee and the entrepreneur and me were battling. I said, okay. So in a short period of time, I did a couple things. I had applied to two different jobs. There was one job that was like the most sought after job um, for people that don't have degrees, you know, people fresh out of the mud. It was the most, it was a factory job, right? It was, it was sought after. You got paid every week, everything like that. What Pop say, D, you got to keep some money in your pocket. And so I was like, okay, well, here we go. And so I was like, all right, here we are. And so I go to school for a while. Then, it's, then the fact uh, the factory job didn't call me at first, and the factory job calls me, and got to keep some money in my pocket. Comes back, and I'm it, it. I mean, it explodes. I'm making I'm making more money in a week than I was making almost in two weeks in the military. Um, I had very very minimal bills, everything like that. So I'm. Um, now I'm now I'm back into this money in your pocket, money in your pocket, money in your pocket, and because I had struggled for for a couple months right as I was getting out, um, it was a difficult, it was just difficult. So I'm like, what? Now this money is here, and the only thing I can see is green. Hey, being a barber is out the window. Hey, I'll cut occasionally, just like I was doing in the military. You know, somebody asked me, I can volunteer my services, yada, 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 so on and so forth. So it goes on and on and on and on. And then one day, uh, oh, oh, so I do that for a while. Working a job, don't really like it. I was like, you know what? I've had enough of this. 
I quit. I came. I had enough money. I came back to Virginia. Um, when I get back to Virginia, there is no barber school. You know, the best thing you can do is get a barber to apprentice you. So I go around and ask some barbers that I know. They're like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not taking no apprentices, so on and so forth. I'm like, all right. That's fine. Cool. I get it. And I put my dreams on hold. Right? I put my dreams, I put my dreams on hold. Well, I take that back. Yeah. Yeah, I put my I put my dreams on hold for a minute. And then I found one barber who was willing to apprentice me. And again, he wasn't a, I I found a place to work, but the guy wasn't a teacher. He didn't teach. He didn't do anything like that. He he would just, he was kind of like, I'm here. You're here. You know, it's your responsibility to bring in clientele and all of this kind of stuff. And, you, you know, this is what your your Lutheran is and so on and so forth. And I'm like, mm, it's not working for me. Just it wasn't. It wasn't it wasn't working for me because it was costing me so much money and I wasn't making no money and I couldn't keep no money in my pocket. So I stopped. And I got another job working at a school. It was a boarding school. So what do you think happened? I ended up cutting hair again there. But it was secondary to my main job. It was, this, it was again, a side hustle. Actually, there it was free. I was just doing it to keep the repetitions up, to do those sorts of things. So I said, okay, that's fine. So I did that. Got to keep some money in your pocket. Decided to get another job. So now I'm working two full-time jobs. Two full-time jobs. And in both jobs, they decided they, they needed someone to cut hair. So who did they call on? Well, I opened my mouth and said, you know, I kind of do it on the side. I could do it. And that's what I ended up doing. Until there was a moment. where I had an issue with one of my coworkers. And he was so upset that I was getting to provide my services while on the clock. And I remember just thinking, to myself, I said, okay. Because word got back to me. He didn't tell me directly. He did it, He did later, but that's because we had a conversation. Word got back to me, and I was like, okay, well. And I remember being so angry and so frustrated because this person's complaining made... It, it changed the way that everything worked. So then they were like, oh, well, you can only do it on this day or you're going to have to come in on your days off. And I'm like, well, I'm not doing that. You know. But I did because I I loved Barbara. I loved, I loved the interaction. I loved being able to connect with people, with clients. I loved all of that stuff. And so I remember um, it happened again. And then one day we just had this 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 fallout. And, you know, same thing, same guy, still being upset about this and everything like that. I went home and told my wife, I said, I think I want to be a barber. I think I want to go and get my barber's license and finish because I'm so tired. Because I felt disrespected because 
I was providing a service that someone else couldn't provide and he and they were upset. They were upset because I had another skill set that they didn't have. And I said, you know what? Hey, we're gonna go and we're gonna go and do this thing all the way, all the way, so that you don't have to doubt. Right. So again, I go out in a community. I find I find another barber that's willing to give me an apprenticeship. Right. Now this is probably maybe four years in between time. I find another barber that's willing to give me an apprenticeship. He gives me the apprenticeship, and it was it was an environment where I was encouraged, where I was coached, where I was educated, um, and everything like that. And it just. Phew, shot me forward. And I tell you, like, I haven't looked back since. And now I can tell Pop, hey, always got to keep some money in your pocket. Because since that day, since that day, I have always had money in my pocket. But you know, the money in my pocket wasn't the biggest thing for me. Honestly, I knew how to create money. I knew how to make money. I knew how to talk to people. I knew that I could get people to trust me to provide a service. I knew I could do all of that stuff. But the biggest deal was I wanted to make money, enough money that I didn't have to miss out on my, he was my only child at the time, but I didn't want to miss out on my child's life. I didn't want to miss out on spending time with my wife. I didn't want to always be like, oh, I got to work. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do that. You know, I mean, I was, I was going days at a time working two jobs where I would see my wife for two hours. A day. You know, I'm up and out of the house before she left. I come home. I'm there. I take a nap. And it was more like 30 minutes because I would take a nap. And so, you know, it just, it really just, I just didn't want to do that. And I didn't understand that at first, that that's what I really desired. I really desired to be able to have the freedom to spend time with my family when I felt like it. Not when someone else told me that I could. And was I, was I ducking responsibility? Absolutely not. Because I worked very hard. But I wanted, I wanted that freedom. And from that first haircut that I did, that one fade that I did for for the barber, for the last barber who gave me a chance at an apprenticeship, my life has never been the same. And so I tell you this, and just so you understand, you are one fade away from changing your entire life. Just one fade away. And I need you all to keep that in mind. It took me It took me almost 10 years to complete a 2,000 hour program. Ten years it took me to go from the idea of this is what is passionate about, this is what I'm passionate about. This is what relaxes me. This is what I enjoy to bringing it to a reality. 
bringing it to a reality took me almost 10 years. And it's okay if the journey is bumpy. But I'm telling you, if this is what you've decided that you want to do, if this is what you believe in, if this is what you're thinking, you are one fade away from changing your entire life. And please do not forget it. Please do not forget it. You are one fade away from whatever it is that you desire in life. Stick with it. Keep going. Push through. Your dream world is on the other side of a fade. I'm your host, Devon Evans. This is the Band of Barbers podcast. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for listening in. Tonight is episode 102. 102. We are two episodes away from creating two years worth of content in 104 days. I want you to let that sink in. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. So, so much. If you like what you heard, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. The band is nothing without its members. I thank you for tuning in. It's greatly appreciated. You guys have a wonderful night, and we'll see you tomorrow.